Hey, good morning, everybody. Good morning. I am Max. I am in Master Sergeant Angela McCullough, and we are here to rock for Vets for Brooks this morning. I want to tell you why I am rocking with Brooke. Number one, this lady is on fire. This lady is a mom. This lady, I, I don't see how she does it. She must have an S on her chest. Because being a mom and running for the uh, office she's running from, I tell you, I've seen it with the family. I've seen it with the children. And how she does it, again, I just don't know. But I'm rocking with it anyway. The second reason, she cares all about us vets. But not only us vets, she cares about the spouses too. Oftentimes, whenever we're out there deploying, we're out there working or whatever, the, the spouses are forgotten about. But guess what? Brooke hadn't forgotten about them. So when she's running out there, she's looking out for the spouses as well. Number three, well, I, I'm a small business owner right here in the Maryland area. And guess what? That certification process is a nightmare. Well, guess what? She's looking at streamlining that. And I appreciate that so much because when I went through the process of doing this for 10 years, I had to go to so many different websites to even get in a certification done. But Brooks is looking at streamlining it. Once again, she is the woman for the respect. And lastly, service before self. That's the Air Force model that we all look for. And guess what? She's given us service already. She is out there pounding the pavement for us. She's out there saying vets, vets, vets. So guess what? Let's keep her Let's put her in there because we need a person like her. How about that? Now I'm going to pass it over to a once Marine, always a Marine, delicate Pat Young. Thank you, man. I appreciate when your words. A friend, a colleague in the Maryland General Assembly uh, for the last eight years. Uh, I can say that when as the uh, chair of the Veterans Caucus uh, and working with her on veterans issues. It's been a pleasure and refreshing to be able to have conversations about veterans issues, about family issues related to deployments, about the stressors related to serving, and knowing that Brooke is standing there as a true ally in the work that we do as veteran legislators uh, and trying to make our community as strong as they can be. Uh, I also want to make sure to point out that the legislation that we've passed related to veteran procurement, related to making sure that uh, families are not being uh, charged unduly or taxed unduly on um, benefits received from the federal government. Uh, she knows these issues. She knows these issues because she's been here in the House. And she, we've had these conversations and she is ready to execute once she's the comptroller of the state. Of Maryland. Uh, I, I'm excited to be in support of her. I'm excited to continue that partnership. Uh, and, I, and I look forward to one you realizing, getting to know that Brooke is the real deal. You know, when you get out of the military, you know, when you were in the military, you had your unit, you had your folks that you were, you cared about the folks that you, you know, you knew you could trust. When you get out, you start finding your folks that you know you can trust and you can trust Brooke Learman. And I stand by that. Uh, and with that, I want to give my enthusiastic support uh, again, as I've done multiple times. And, and that I'll, I'll make sure that I pass it off to uh, Mr. or excuse me, Councilman Wu. If you're on, go ahead and, uh, and take it from there, sir. I am. Thank you, Delegate Young, and thank you for having me here today. I'm enthusiastically supporting Brooke Learman because I'm in the city of Gaithersburg and I'm where the rubber meets the road. And we see issues all the time, not just dealing with veterans, but issues that the comptroller will be impacting on a daily basis. So we need somebody in office that has the enthusiasm, that has the, the, the wherewithal to, to actually legislate as a comptroller for things that matter. And Brooke shows up. She has an excellent reputation. Uh, in the House of Delegates for the work that she's doing. Um, and, and quite frankly, you know, I'm not even sure who she's running against. Can I say that? Um, Brooke is there. She's everywhere. And um, she'll do a great job as comptroller. And thank you for having me here today. I'm handing it off to Gloria. Gloria. Good morning. Good morning. So I am elated to not only be here, but I am a U.S. Army retired command sergeant major. And I can tell you that I've uh, met Ms. Brooke on numerous occasions. And every single time that I've met her, not only did her passion come through, but her advocacy for our veterans. Uh, I had the privilege of hosting a veterans event for, uh, in Annapolis on uh, Veterans Day, and she did everything uh and with the kitchen sink, when it talks to veterans, the veterans were so elated to have her there uh, that, that it, it immediately gave me 
uh, a presence of knowing what a public servant is. But what I really, really admire most about her is her passion and compassion uh, for not only public, but for people with disabilities. I am a strong advocate of our wounded, ill, and, and, and uh, wounded, ill, uh, and injured warriors. And without question, uh, on every single occasion when I went, when I've spoken with uh, Brooke, she has not only wholeheartedly wanted to ensure that our wounded, ill, and injured veterans here in Maryland have an opportunity to succeed, but she has a strong focus on making sure that they just don't thrive, that we never, ever, ever leave veterans uh, behind and ensure that our veterans that are homeless have a place to stay. So I enjoy speaking with her about that. And last but not least, I was a single mom in the military. I was able to do it and I had a strong network and just to know how incredibly difficult that is to do and then think that she's gonna take on the amazing job of controller. Not only do I know that she can do it, I am excited to see, to uh, endorse her. And I would be more than proud to stand beside her shoulder to shoulder, as we say in the army, uh, we're only as strong as the person that's standing beside us, and I will stand beside Brooke every single day. So, ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure and privilege to not only endorse uh, Brooke Learman for the next state comptroller for the state of Maryland, but I give you my pleasure to hear some warm words from her. Ms. Learman. Thank you. Oh, my goodness. Thank you so much, Gloria. Thank you so much, Councilman Wu. Um, thank you so much to my dear friend, Delegate Pat Young, who I've had the pleasure of serving with for the past eight years, and Angela for kicking us off. Thank you, everybody, for joining us today. Mayor Jake Day, um, Carl, Jill, Jason, Scott, uh, you know, Ed, I just, I really, truly appreciate it. And Senator Will Smith's going to hop on. Just really, truly appreciate all of your service your dedication to our nation um, and the continued advocacy that you do, right? You didn't, you live lives of service. And so that's why it's so meaningful um, to have you here today um, and to have your support. I am truly honored. Um, you know, this is such an important conversation to be having because Maryland has over 360,000 veterans and is home to so many military defense, intelligence bases, agencies, and a burgeoning cybersecurity field. Um, you know, I'm honored to come from a family of service. Uh, both of my grandfathers um, uh, are veterans, as well as all of my uncles. Um, and so I've learned over the years about their work, grew up hearing stories um, and learning about the sacrifices that they made. One of my favorite stories is uh, one of my grandfathers um, was in the Navy and in D-Day, um, and he surprised, he was coming back, he's from Wisconsin, but he was coming back at one point, and my grandmother loves to tell the story, or she used to love to tell the story before she passed, but how she took a train from Beloit, Wisconsin, during World War II, to Boston, Massachusetts, a place she'd never been before, and uh, because she heard that Lou, my grandfather, was going to be uh, home, or at, back on land for a couple days, and he came to the boarding house where he was staying and she was waiting in the closet um, and burst out of the closet to surprise him. Um, and they hadn't seen each other in so long. And it's a story that sort of got passed down. And my grandmother used to love sharing it with us um, because she was so proud. You know, she was young and had traveled all the way from Beloit, Wisconsin to Boston, Massachusetts, um, which was a big deal back then. She wasn't flying, you know. Um, so I just love and appreciate all of your work so much. It truly means so much. And throughout my time in the legislature, have come to have a much better understanding of the importance of public good public policy to support our veterans and to support um, our deployed uh, our deployed military and their families. Right? We know that veterans have our backs, and we need to have theirs at every level of government. You know, I'm proud to support our veterans today and every day. I was thrilled to work with Jill, who's on the uh, call right now, to champion and pass Maryland's HOME Act two years ago. Legislation, um, I worked with Senator Will Smith on that. It was legislation that prevents landlords from discriminating against prospective renters based on the source of income, including veterans vouchers. I was proud to testify alongside Jill, a Coast Guard veteran who'd been repeatedly denied housing because she was using a veterans voucher program to help pay for that housing. Working with Senator Will Smith, we were able to change Maryland law to ensure that Jill and veterans like her have access to stable and safe housing. And as Comptroller, I'm excited to continue to fight for all of you um, and for all of our veterans, because there's so much more that we can do to make sure that Maryland is the best state in the country for veterans ensuring that we are streamlining our veteran business certification programs. Like Angela said, 
it can be incredibly challenging to get that certification. And I believe that government is about removing barriers and creating opportunity, creating opportunity for our veterans and for our, our veterans who are entrepreneurs means making sure that we're streamlining those programs and that certification. We know that veteran entrepreneurs have so much to offer, and we have to find ways to make it easier to start a business in Maryland and enable them to grow that business and thrive. I also know the sacrifices that military families make, you know, often uprooting their lives and careers and moving to new locations. We need to make sure to do everything we can to support military families, make it easy to transfer credentials and licenses to Maryland. You know, the last thing we need is more red tape, making an already difficult situation more burdensome. The comp under me, the comptroller's office will have a special people dedicated to welcoming families into the state of Maryland, ensuring that they understand um, you know, how to pay their taxes here, making it easier to do business here and working with them to welcome them. I also want to make sure that, you know, the comptroller's office is one of only three statewide offices. We've got the governor, the attorney general, and the comptroller. But the comptroller also has 12 field offices all over the state of Maryland. Um, and we want to make sure that those regional field offices are closely coordinating with the county VSOs. And where there's a county without a VSO, my office can help play a coordinating role to ensure that veterans have the resources they need and, and the resources that they've really earned, right? And finally, as comptroller and as our state's chief financial officer, I will ensure that our state never accepts private funds to deploy our National Guard to be used on private missions like we've seen in other states. We will make sure that you know, I will make sure that my office correctly and timely pays National Guard members. And if there's ever an issue, I will have a dedicated staff to immediately correct it because our National Guard, but our National Guard is never to be used like a private army. They're too important. You know, during the during the early days of the pandemic, it was really an honor to be able to work with so many of our National Guardsmen and women who came to Baltimore. Um, they helped us deploy, they helped us give food to families all over uh, my district and all over the city. And they were there when we needed them. I will tell you, we Baltimore City Public Schools was having challenges getting food out to families. And I placed a call uh, to a friend in the National Guard and he helped work with us directly connected with Baltimore City Public Schools so that we could bring the National Guard into Baltimore City to make sure that we were getting food out to people in a timely way, people who needed that food each and every day. And I was honored to go visit many of those National Guardsmen at the different schools around my district to thank them for their service. So thank you all so much for being here today. Uh, there's so much, you know, the election is coming up soon, June 2022. And there has not been an open seat for state comptroller since 1998. And we know that there's more federal money coming into the state of Maryland than at any other time in our lifetime. So this is our opportunity to think big to make sure that the comptroller's office has our back, um, to make sure that the comptroller is an advocate, the people's advocate, and an advocate for all of our veterans, all of our service members, and their families. And I'm excited after serving in the, on the Appropriations Committee, um, overseeing the Joint Committee on Pensions, acting as a civil rights and disability rights attorney, um, and as a mom, as Angela said, I'm excited to be that advocate for our veterans, for our service members, and for their families. I am ready to go on day one to be a, a public servant and a public advocate for all of you and all of these families. So I'm thrilled today um, to also, to close us out, I'd love to welcome my friend, Senator Will Smith, um, who is a great leader in the Maryland State Senate um, and has dedicated his life in multiple ways to serving our country. So thank you all. I hope I can earn your support in the June election. And thanks to everybody on this Zoom today and our Facebook Live for joining us. Now I'm excited to turn it over to Senator Will Smith to close us out. Thank you. Hey, well, good morning, everyone. And uh, thank you, Brooke, for having us. It's good to see so many friendly faces and public servants, uh, military veterans across the screen here. First, I just want to say, Brooke, thank you so much for thinking strategically and thoughtfully and intentionally about veterans in Maryland. Um, your platform is one of the most thorough, comprehensive, and thoughtful documents that I've seen of a candidate uh, for a comptroller or any statewide office, frankly, and it's much appreciated. In particular, I, uh, I think that the way that you're thinking strategically about the offices across the state and how they can be conduits for information and delivering services to veterans that so often be, are isolated when they come back from deployment employment or don't have access to those federal resources that are passed through the state. And so I just want to say thank you for thinking about our community, 
Um, thank you for supporting our community when you've been in the legislature. You've been a great friend, a great advocate. Um, as all of you know on screen, uh, Brooke is the most well-prepared and intelligent uh, person in the room, even though she won't tell you that. Um, but it's, it's just an honor to have your support. Um, it's an honor uh, to support you in turn and to push you forward as you uh, continue your campaign. I know that it's coming up quickly. So uh, we are here ready to mobilize uh, in every sector of the state. Uh, for your efforts. And just, I want to say thank you so much uh, for your friendship over the years and for your, uh, your stellar advocacy. So it's been, it's really exciting to be a part of your team and I look forward to doing whatever we can to get you across the finish line. Thank you so much, Senator. Thank you again, everybody for joining. I encourage folks to visit our website at brooklearman.com to learn how to get involved. There's a lot of work to do and we have a lot of people to reach between now and June um, to make sure that we can work to act to make sure that Maryland really rises to meet this moment. Um, and with all of your help, I know that we can do that. So thank you all so much. I look forward to continuing to work with you on the campaign and have a great day. Thanks everybody. Thank you. Take care.